All right. <clears throat> so exponential functions and log functions. This is an exponential function. It's usually used to calculate businesses, loans, um, the growth, decay. Log function is used to solve those things. Um, what is important about these functions is they are inverse function. So just like multiplication and division are inverse of each other, when you're solving, you're going to use them to solve. The same thing with addition and subtraction. Same thing with exponential and log. They are inverse of each other. I am later, next week we'll learn how to like manipulate them. However, what is important is this Y is the same as this Y. This B is called the base, is the same thing as this B. And this X, the exponent, is the same thing as the result of the log. Okay? So all of these numbers, when we go to manipulate them, mean the same thing to each other. Okay? This is the result, this is the base, this is the um, exponent. Your A here, this is a multiple factor. You don't always need an A, right? So sometimes that won't be needed at all. We'll get to those instances. Um, <coughs> Scientific notation is something that you were supposed to learn back in elementary school and into middle school. I don't know how much you learn, but you will see it often with exponential functions because we're calculating stuff like profit, which goes into millions. Because we're calculating stuff like um, decay or growth, like the virus, right? So when they're calculating the COVID virus, it's an exponential function. And they usually don't say like millions, it's 1.2 million, right? That is used in scientific notation. So if it is one comma two zero zero, right? This is 1.2 million. And in scientific notation, you would calculate how many decimal places you had to move, you have to move this point. So if the decimal's here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be raised to the six. That's how you display 1.2 million. I don't know if you can see that. That looks pretty small. I'm going to rewrite that bigger. I'll be forgetting the screen is kind of tiny. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that same example over. If I had 1,200,000, right? Technically, that's 1.2 million. That's how people say it. And as exponential function, in reality, you take that number and you see how many times I gotta move this decimal place over, and that's the exponent. Okay? So that's exponential scientific notation. Another thing you're gonna see within your homework notes, um, I think there might be one problem I gave you. These, but <coughs> e is a number type of function, okay? So e, I just want to move this a little bit, okay? So the number e is for continuous growth or decay. E is represented as a number in higher mathematics when you talk about exponential. The inverse <coughs> is its natural law. So instead of the log function, Right? It's a natural law. Not a big deal for you to remember right now. However, E is what we're going to be using because E is going to be in the function that calculates our continuous growth. That means something that continues to grow. Your bank account, right? That is money that continues to grow. Your savings account, money that continues to grow. And all of this virus and COVID, that's continued to grow. Hopefully, eventually, right, we're going to get a treatment or whatever is going to happen that they're going to save us. Um, and it's going to be decay. <clears throat> it's going to be decay, right? It's still going to be a function that involves E, hopefully, because that means that it's growing at a fast rate. If it decays like one person at a time, the treatment, then it's no longer continuous. It has to be multiple people at a time. So right now, you're saying that the virus, if I have it, I can give it to up to three people. That's how fast it's spreading. So for every person that has it, three more people get it. That's what makes it exponential. It's not like I pass it to one person. That would be a regular linear function, right? But if I pass it to three people, most three people pass it to three people, it grows at a faster rate. That's the difference between exponential compared to a function, linear function. <clears throat> All right, 
So here are some examples of different types of growth and or decay. So I'm gonna move them around so you can see. Growth, population grows. It is continuous growth and it grows at a rapid rate because most people don't just have one kid. The majority of their couples, our average couple right now in America, I think it's went up to three. It used to be 2.5 kids. Can't have 0.5 kids, but that's just how it rounded, right? So our population is exponential because it's not like one person is having one kid. Cooling coffee down. When it cools down, because it's going down, is decay, right? So whenever something's going down, it's decay. When you cool coffee off, the reason why it's exponential, because it doesn't go down just slowly, right? It goes down when you take coffee out the pot, right? It goes down a little bit, takes a little while, takes a little while. And then once that heat, that boiling point is done, it takes very few seconds to get it from warm to cold, right? It stays hot for a little while, but soon as it turns a little bit lukewarm, then it drops and it goes straight to cold. All right, value of a car. So people would like to think that their car value increases. It does not, unless you have a classic car, okay? So we're not talking about classic, beautiful cars. We're talking about the average basic car that you buy to drive around, your first car that you're gonna get, <clears throat> right? The value of that car is gonna decay because it's gonna go down. If you own the car after three years, it's not worth as much as when you purchased it. Right? It also decays at a faster rate. <clears throat> what I love about this unit is I worked at a car dealership for seven years, and I usually can show you if you go to class, you know, lots of fun grass. He's not going to be quiet while you're in here. What do you need, Deuce? The team was going to sell it, Okay, did you move it? Move it off of that burner. Okay. If you're not turn it off, turn it off. Um, But that value of the car, and then you can come back and watch from outside the gate. You can come back and watch from outside the gate. The value of the car goes down, so that's why it decays. <clears throat> Fire. Fire is rapid growth, right? Exponential growth. Because a fire, if anybody's ever seen a fire happen, let's say on TV, because we don't play with fire, <laughs> right? So if you, if you ever lit a fire pit or a fire place, you can light a little tiny match, right? If you put it onto something that has things that can expand, right? So you put it on that fire log, it starts off the corner of the log, and in moments, it is the whole log is on fire. That's what it means by exponential. And it's growth because that fire continues to get bigger and bigger. Compound interest on a savings account, right? Hopefully your savings account is growing. This is the key one that we're gonna be working with. Um, this is why you're studying companies. A lot of you have wrote me already and said, do I have to research companies if I'm not doing the stock market? Even if you weren't doing the stock market game, every year I make everyone research a company. I usually make everyone create their own company and we play this little company game, can't do that. So I still want you to be able to research companies, understand business, because understanding money and the way it works is how you conquer life, right? So compound interest. Any investment that you make in life, life stocks, anything like your savings accounts, this is your basic account. Bank of America, you put money in your savings, you're going to build compound interest. Your interest doesn't build that much on a normal savings account because they give you this tiny little rate. However, if you get, um, they're called CDs, right, a certificate of deposit, where you put in, let's say, $3,000 and you let it sit there, you don't touch it, and they give you a higher rate because they know you're not gonna be taking the money out, then your savings grows a little bit faster. Volume of sound is decay. Volume of sound. So hopefully in science class by now, one of your great science teachers has done an experiment where you tap a vibration to make sound. Right? So how vibration works with the volume of sound is you tap it and immediately you get a high pitch, right? And that vibration, not only does it slow, so here's the vibration of the sound, right? This is the initial vibration. It goes down and then eventually it goes really, really small, right? So volume of sound is exponential decay because it's high and then it drops, 
and eventually it kind of levels off where there's no sound. COVID-19. This is the coronavirus that is happening right now. I am going to give you some factual data on this. It sucks that this is happening, but it does give us some real live data for this unit. So COVID-19 right now is growth. It's exponentially growing. Hopefully we're gonna get it to a decay soon, right? So we can all get our lives back. Um, but until then, it is growing. It is still growing. And right now, I think that exponential function is to the power of three which means every third, every person gives it to three more people. Okay, I'm checking my phone, make sure there were no text messages coming in. All right, I'm going to move along. <clears throat> All right, so here is a graph for Stratford. So which the mayor of Stratford, <coughs> excuse me, so Stratford sends us every single day a chart. So this is real data. She's been sending it since March 12th, and every day she sends a new one. I capped it at um, April 11th because that's when I made this slide. However, she just sent another one probably five minutes ago that has updated data, and it's definitely higher cases. So every day she tells us the lighter blue color, if you can see that, are cases that were already there, and then the darker blue are the new cases for that day, right? So you can see how very small new cases got bigger. We had small, kind of didn't go too crazy. Then look, it got bigger. And I don't know what happened on the 7th, right? We're here now, look at these cases. Whew, right? The 8th, there were no really new cases, but then look how big of that jump it is again, right? And so here's these jumps getting a little smaller. Our goal is to keep it smaller so that eventually it can level off and start to decay. But this is how an exponential function looks. It's like leveled and then immediately starts to jump. Right? This is when they started telling us to stay home when we were at school. They were like, everybody stay home, it's getting bad. Nobody really wants to listen, so people are still going out. Here we are. Now people are just like, now it's to the point where it's exploding, so it's, the cases are much, much higher. <coughs> all right, this is my favorite function of all times. Oh, I wish I could get this all on the screen. All right, here we go. So this is my favorite function. It's called the PERT function, right? P-E-R-T, PERT. If you remember PERT for the rest of your life, you can calculate almost any loan or account that someone's going to give you. When you go to buy your house, you can calculate with PERT. There are definitely other um, equations or functions that will give you like a monthly breakdown, a weekly breakdown. We don't have enough time to do all of that. You can look them up, they're called content continuous compound interest functions, and you can look for one that's for the week or for the month. This can also help you calculate things like your school loans, right, when you go to school. This can help when you buy a house, when you buy a car. Any kind of purchase that you're gonna have, any kind of savings account you wanna calculate, you wanna say, hey, I wanna put <coughs> principal amount. I wanna put my starting principal amount into my account. And then I wanna take it and I want to see how long, if my bank gave me a certain rate after a certain amount of time, how long is it going to take, or what is it going to take for me to have a certain amount? I can also say, oh, you know what? One of those CDs I was just telling you about, right? A certificate of deposit. I'm going to put 3000 in that certificate. I know that they're going to give me a 2% rate, and that CD is going to be sitting in there for the next four years. I want to take it out. Most of you are in 10th grade, right? Say you want to put it for four years because you know by your sophomore year of college, you're going to want a new car. You're going to be trying to get your apartment off campus. Whatever is going to be happening. So you're saying, I'm going to put this amount of money in today, and in four years, I'm going to take it out. How much money am I going to have? This is what you would use because you would put those numbers in here, and it's going to give you the exact number you were going to have that time. And then you can say, mm, I need a little bit more than that. Maybe I'll put an extra $1,000 if we had like $1,000 sitting on the side. If not, that's fine too, right? You can put a couple hundred in here too. Don't, don't be discouraged. Saving starts anywhere. However, be careful. Side note. This T and this function only calculate time in years, or the function does not work properly. So if you want to calculate in six months, say you only had enough time to put this in the savings for six months. 
You can't put 6 into here for time. You'll have to put 0.5 because 6 months is half a year. Okay? Please understand that this is very, very important because when you go to do your quizzes or if you ever want to use this in real life because you're going to remember this, right? You're going to say, oh yeah, my math teacher did tell me how to calculate this wrong. Right? Make sure that T is correct. That's where people make a big mistake of. Rate also, okay? Your rate is given to you in percents. When the bank tells you that they're giving you 0.2%, they're not really giving you 0.2 of your money. Okay, you still have to move that over, right, before you put that rate in. You can't put two in here for that rate for 2%. Not how it works, okay? So we're going to use this. Solving with your per formula. So if I say I have an initial investment of $100, remember my per, my initial principal is my initial amount, my starting amount. I have $100. I want to know within five years, so here's my five for my T, at a rate of 8%, 0.08, how much am I going to have? Okay? So if I just took $100 and I put it in this account for five years, if they gave me an interest rate of 8%, how much money am I have? Now you need a calculator for this. If you're on big ideas, it gives, it gives you the option to use Desmos. If you're not, use Desmos on your phone. Okay? So let's see if I can pull up Desmos. Oh, you know what? You don't necessarily have to pull up Desmos too. You can Google. So let me show you how you use Google to help you out with this stuff. If I could move this, thank you. All right, so here's my function, and I want to Google. So I'm going to just go to Google's homepage. Not Google Maps, people. All right, so here's Google homepage, and I want to calculate this function. So what I would first do to make it easier for me is I'm going to do 0.08 times 5. Okay, times 5. So it's going to give me this 0.4. So what I did first, and you don't have to do it this way. If you have the calculator, um, you know, here's now the calculator. This E is already here for you, okay? And this is just me putting into Google. I didn't download any apps, I didn't do anything. This was right on the Google search. So I put the 0.08 times five and I got 0.4. I can E that, right? <clears throat> and so if I E that, right, there I go. And then I wanna times that by 100. So I know now, if I had this function, right? I think that was the wrong function. All right, I'm going to try to type that in because I think that did that wrong. So if I clear that, so if I had 0 0.08. became 0.4. I'm just going to put it here because I don't know if it's giving me right and I want to double check this. Raised to the 0.4 
Okay, sorry. All right, so I don't think you should use this E function on your Google calculator. I don't know why it's not giving me the raise, but I'm gonna do that again so you can see it. So the proper way to use this in Google, if you use decimals, you can just use E to the X, it will work. So again, I put 0 0.08 times five, enter. It's gonna give me 0.4. Then I'm gonna take, again, right up here, I'm gonna hit E, the little carrot button, right? And then I'm gonna put my 0.4 because that was originally what it gave me. So now I take this amount and I multiply it, so times 100, enter. So I know now after five years with that 8%, I'm going to have $149. So my account with compound interest made $49 just by sitting in there. Yes, it's not a lot of money, but you only started with $100, right? $49 is a lot of free money just from sitting in an account. Another one. So now we're going to buy a house. Okay? So when you go to buy a house, again, you can use this perk. This is, now there are definitely lots of other equations to use when you're buying a house. This is the most simplex, in my opinion, to use, right? It gives you the basic. So if I say I want to buy a house, I don't know how much I'm going to spend on that house. I'm going to compare it. My bank is going to say, do you want to take a 30-year loan? with 5% or 15 year loan with 2.8%. Now usually people do the 30 year loan. And really that's because your payment is gonna be a smaller amount because you have longer time to pay it off. So here's my P. <laughs> Hold All right, so if I was buying a house, you want to see if you use this 30 years or the 15 years, how much money difference are you going to spend, let's see. So if this P is my initial amount, I'm going to put 150 into this initial amount, okay? I'm using my E function, remember this is a function now. My rate, 5%, remember, is the same thing now as 0 0.05, do not just put five in. So I'm gonna raise that to 0 0.05, okay? My T, my time, so this is after 30 years, so I'm gonna put in 30 here, okay? And now I'm just gonna pull that right back up on Google, because I don't have a nice handy calculator at home, but I do always have my little Google because I have my phone. So the first thing I'm gonna do is point the 0 0.05, times 30, okay, and that's 1.5. So now I know that my E needs to be raised to 1.5. My E raised to 1.5, and now I have to take this number and multiply it to times my 150,000, okay? So I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna multiply to 150, one, zero, enter. Okay, so now that's how much money if I got that house loan, <clears throat> if I got that house loan that was originally 150,000 with a 5% interest rate for 30 years, going to be paying $6,772,250. That's with the interest, okay? We're going to now compare that. If instead of that 30 years, same exact loan, however, because they're taking out for a short amount of time, the bank's going to be nicer to you, they now want to give you a cheaper rate. Right? So 
now I have a rate of 0 to 8. Do not round. Everybody wants to take off this decimal because no one wants to play with decimals. No one really likes fractions. Do not round, okay? It doesn't make you, it just hides your actual money spent. So I'm gonna start with minimizing my exponent. 0 0.28 times 15. 0.42, so now I want E raised to the 0.42. And now I want to take that amount and I want to multiply it times 150,000. I want you to see the dramatics and how much less money you're going to be giving that bank for that loan, right? Again, everyone can't afford to do that because taking out a shorter loan means a bigger payment. So if you can't afford that bigger payment, it's not really something you can do. However, it is a dramatic difference from 600,000 to 228,000. So if you remember nothing from my class, remember this PERC formula because it does help you break this down. When you're buying a house, again, you don't have as much leeway because you kind of have to do what's in your budget to survive. However, when you're taking out a school loan, and let's say they offer you $20,000 compared to them offering you, you know, $25,000 they give you different rates, you can now put this into this formula to see how much money you're going to spend slash waste to make sure you make the best decision for whatever loan you're going to have. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of explanation on how to play with loans, what to do with them, um, how they're calculated. <clears throat> it does not work all the time, right? There's lots of different options. There's lots of different options that you have to take into part. So what are you multiplying it as? Okay, sorry, Jan. So the question was, what are you multiplying it by after you did the 0.28 times 15? So when you do the 0.28 times 15, you're not multiplying it. You're taking it and you're doing E raised to that amount, I think it was 42, right? So this raised thing, right? If you're using it from your computer, it's above the keyboard. So on the keyboard, this is a number, the number six button, right? If you're on a calculator, it's just that little carrot button. So you're not multiplying it from that step. You're taking E, you're raising it to that value. Then you're gonna multiply it by 150,000, okay? Um, this is really hard for you to ask questions right now. So if you do have questions, please, I guess, write them on Google Classroom and let me know. I am going to download the video, put it up there as notes, but this is the basic of how you do it. You can look up on YouTube lots of other videos on how to do compound interest. That would be your keywords when you're looking up on YouTube. How to figure out compound interest. How to help on compound interest. When you're on Big Ideas in the book, um, it's a brief thing on compound interest in the book. However, I focus on it because I think that is real life, right? They give you all these problems on how to calculate science stuff, which is awesome, right? We need scientists, absolutely. However, everyone should have a goal in life to own something, right? Everyone should want to own a house, own a car. Those are basic essentials that we need to survive in America. Not a lot of places, right? You can live in tons of cities in the world, even in America, there's tons of cities, right? Where you can live in New York, let's say, you can live in New York and never own a car. They have so much option, so many options for public transportation. However, in Connecticut, we don't. It would take me forever to get to Derby if I did not have a vehicle, right? So when I took my trip to Derby this morning to go to the store that I like there, if I did not have a vehicle, that would be hard for me. So in Connecticut, you need a car. This helps you calculate that car. You want to make sure you can calculate your own loan. Don't depend on others. I've always said that to you. Yes, you can always pay an accountant. That is something you should do if you have a lot of money, right? However, you want to double check even your accountant if people get taken every day. So PERT function, please use it. 
I'm going to sign off now because I don't want to ramble when no one can really ask me any questions. And I'm going to leave it so that now you can go on, go classroom, and ask me all the questions you want.